Hello and welcome to our I Learn at Craigslist parent information session. This is for all new parents with children beginning next year in years four to six and who are new to our I Learn at Craigslist BYOD iPad program. Craigslist iPad program has been running successfully for over seven years in years four to six and we are excited about continuing this in 2023. Welcome to our information session. This session will cover an overview of Craigslist BYOD program, the purpose of using iPads in classrooms and the advantages of your child being involved. How devices will be used will also be discussed. You will hear from teachers who have used iPads as a learning tool in their classrooms over the past few years and some of the different ways that they have used them. We explain iPad specifications and requirements. Student responsibilities as well as family responsibilities are also discussed in this session. Lastly, we explain the next steps in preparing for your child's participation in 2023. Okay, let's talk about the role of technology. Think about the technology that you have in your life at present. How many smart devices do you have in your home? Technology is continually changing, and while we are not just teaching children about current technology, we are teaching children to enhance their learning through the use of technology. It's about problem solving, thinking creatively and outside the box, allowing students multiple opportunities to communicate, demonstrate and share their understanding and learning. It's a journey and at Craigslist, we believe that technology plays a major role in our lives and we cannot ignore it. We believe in embracing this and using emerging technologies to enhance and enrich our education. Our iPad program has a number of different purposes. As you've just heard, we believe it develops the knowledge and skills necessary for 21st century workforces. It also enables personalization of student learning. Students have continuous access to educational materials, and we believe it strengthens the links between home and school because students are able to take the work home with them that they have done that day. It adds value to our existing practice. This is really important because people often believe that iPads are replacing something. We are adding value through the use of the iPads. Research shows that technology increases student engagement. It's in line with high school expectations. It is more sustainable than using paper copy work. It aligns with our digital technologies curriculum. It increases ICT and problem solving skills and it is the future. So how do we use iPads in our classroom? Well, firstly, I think differentiation is a, uh, a key uh, thing here because we can differentiate and um, provide different material for different students that meets their individual needs. They have access to rich and current resources. We have um, Google at our fingertips when we want to look up information. Um, we learn critical information literacy skills, and we also can give instant feedback on student work. You'll see this shortly when you hear about some of our teachers, what our, actual, what our teachers are doing in the classroom. It encourages collaboration between students um, and there are a number of open-ended apps that we use um, that rather than the drill and practice, this is not a replacement for pen and paper. As Amanda said earlier, it is about adding value to our existing learning. Um, we have access to our emails and a number of our resource scheme subscriptions. Have a listen to what our teachers have got to say about how they use uh, iPads in their own classrooms. So let's hear from some of our teachers about how they have used iPads in their classrooms over the past few years. Some of these examples that you're going to hear um, in a minute are from teachers from 2020, 2021 and as well as this year in 2022. Let's see what they have to say and how iPads are used. Hi, Amanda DeSetto here. I'm currently a year four teacher. I've been on the iPad program for a number of years now and I just want to show you a few things that I'm doing in my classroom around the use of the iPads. So I guess with the iPads at its simplest form it's a really great way of sharing lessons. So where you can see the fractions here that's actually just a little bit of a snip of some student work that they have done through a lesson that I have shared with them. Um, what I will say about this though is that it's amazing the difference it can make when students are able to use the iPad functions rather than a pen and paper in order to show things like diagrams and their working. Um, some very reluctant writers don't hesitate when it comes to working on their iPad. Now where it says speech to text here, this is a good 
um, example of student support. Again, for someone who might be a reluctant writer or for someone who needs extra scaffolding with their writing. The iPads are a really, really functional tool to be able to do things like speech to text. Also text to speech, which isn't shown here, but students being able to have large sections of text where it can then be read out loud to them. So it actually does break down barriers in a way to support students with their literacy learning. Here you can see a science assessment task that used to be a paper and pen copy booklet, which has been transformed into a digital presentation on a science topic using Microsoft PowerPoint. So the students are able to show their learning not only through text, but through their use of images. They also took photographs of work within their book and they uploaded it into the PowerPoint to be able to show their understanding about the life cycle of an animal. With the writing analysis, I was able to share with my class large pieces of text for the purpose of them analysing the structure. And you can see here, um, the student has used colour coding to be able to highlight the different sections, to be able to see how paragraphs are made up of different ideas and different arguments. Video and audio editing is another really fun way for the students to engage in their learning that we wouldn't be able to do without the technology like the iPads. So for my students' drama and media assessment last term, they created a movie. Um, they filmed all of their scenes, put them onto iMovie, and then used that software to um, show their editing to create a polished film. The use of a green screen is also another really fun way to engage the students in media practices. The last thing I want to show you from year four is just some way that I collect some data on the students. It's very purposeful because it allows me to collect data in real time. So I can use software programs and apps to set up quizzes and assessments. Um, the students complete those and it sends me the results live. So I can very easily see at the end of a lesson or if I'm getting ready to do an assessment and I want the students to do some revision, I can very easily see those students who need some extra learning and some extra support. I can also very easily see the students that need ex extension. Um, the students are really engaged in this type of learning. They find these quizzes really fun. It also gives them immediate feedback on how they're going so they can analyse how they are feeling with their learning and whether there's an area that they need to work on. Hi there, I'm Shaney Micklejohn. I'm the Year 4-5 Composite class teacher and I've been involved with the BYOD program since its very inception. I'm here to talk about the way I'm using my iPads in my classroom, um, specifically around the uh, ability to give students uh, good quality feedback and being able to differentiate class content to suit a whole range of learners. On the slide you're looking at, um, there's a few different uh, work samples that I've taken from my class over this year and last year. The force diagram on the far left of your screen, uh, a student had to, to draw a diagram and write an explanation about the experiment that we conducted. Underneath you can see that um, what the iPad has allowed me to do is see the students work immediately and give them some timely feedback, which in terms of students being able to correct their work and um, and improve it, uh, it's a really valuable tool. Um, the, middle, the middle image is uh, looking at student reading and looking at their comprehension and being able to have the same piece of text in front of me as the students are reading and be able to pick up on the things that students are doing well and the things that they still have to work on. The other slide uh, on the far right of the screen is about students reading goals and our ability to track how students are going with their goals and to give them feedback on what they still have to improve and work on. So one of the things that the iPad program has allowed us to do really effectively is be able to differentiate the work that we're doing in our lessons to a whole range of different learning abilities. On the screen is an example of a typical maths lesson for my year four, year five class. So on the far left is the 
uh, classwork that um, that is the the sort of the minimum year level expectation, so that the the work that every student is expected to be able to do. And on the other sides of the screens, the other sections of the OneNote has uh, practice for that particular concept for the fast finishers, and then underneath that um, is work for extension students who are well above what the year level expectation is. Uh, so the OneNote uh, allows us to provide for a whole range of learners in a whole range of contexts and it's right there at their fingertips. And it also means that uh, with the work that the students are doing on the screen at any one time, that we can keep tabs on how they're going and if they're making mistakes in any of these areas. One of the other really effective uses of the iPads that we found this year is with spelling and dictation. Uh, the students all get a paper copy of their spelling list because they, they cut up a word sort and they, they get to know the spelling rules for each particular week and each particular list. And out of those spelling words, I, I write dictation sentences for the children as a, as a handwriting and listening activity, as well as testing that they understand the spelling of their spelling words. Of course, in my class with such a wide range of learners, um, the iPads has given me the ability to be able to put all my dictation and my spelling lists onto the iPads via OneNote. So what this has meant is I've been able to record myself saying the dictation sentences uh, for each spelling group for each week. And what this has meant the students have been able to do is assess themselves at their own pace. This is very handy if you have learners who uh, have auditory processing problems and, and need a few more repetitions of things before they write them down if they have to listen to them first. So this has been a fantastic uh, resource to have for that um, as I do have a couple of learners who do struggle with writing things down that they've, ha they've heard out, of, out loud as opposed to copying off a screen. This has also meant that I've been able to give extension spelling to those learners who are really quite competent in this area but that the main benefit is that every child has spelling at, at their level and they have their dictation at their level and more importantly at their own pace. Uh, so this has been a fantastic resource to have uh, for each student in the class with respect to, to doing this. I upload all my PowerPoints to OneNote, so while I'm teaching them and they're visible on the screen in front of the students in the classroom, um, other students actually have access to them on their iPads in front of them as they're working, so they can move around the room. They don't even have to be in the room to access the lesson anyway. So as I'm talking, they go through the lesson um, um, on their iPads and they can interact and write on top of the their own version on their iPads as we go. And you can see in this literacy warm up slide, the student has actually typed in and he's written his responses as he's gone through. You can draw on them, you can highlight. Here's some words he's highlighted that he knows and understands the words of these, um, the vocabulary we're going to be using in the lesson. And um, yeah, so they can interact with it as we go through. It makes it much easier, allows for differentiation. And it also means that students can catch up if they happen to be uh, at home um, learning from home. Here is an example of how I've used technology in, an, in a different way. Um, last term, as an example, we wrote feature articles and students got to upload their own individual feature articles as PDFs to an online forum. Uh, here they were able to uh, read each other's uh, um, feature articles kind of like a social media platform and they got to comment we did lots of uh, discussions around appropriate ways to uh, provide feedback to our peers on their articles and it was a way that we could share them on share them online so this was a really powerful tool in um, sharing our sharing the work that we've been completed using a digital a digital forum this year, we actually started using Microsoft Teams. For those parents out there who use Teams in their workplace, uh, we're actually loving it. It's a great way that we can communicate um, with our students. I can, um, we have our own class Teams 
you can see there on the left hand side there we have a number of channels I've got all the subjects down the left hand side and one example of one way that I've used teams is um, with art so the kids have uh, um, created their art projects they had to create a monument um, and then they took photographs of how they wanted to display their art I got them to upload to the art channel they uploaded their image and they also then had to reflect on their piece of work which I could then assess their writing um, the great thing about this is that they get to share each other's work they get to share their own work and then even comment on each other's uh, in the uh, for feature articles this this term rather than um, what I did last year this year we uploaded to teams and students were actually encouraged to comment read and comment on each other's uh, articles and to give really good quality um, feedback uh, we talk about it being it looks a little bit like a social media kind of platform however the language that we use is is formal and it's used for formal um, in a formal way so um, I did um, have some conversations with students this year about their wa their way that they were um, commenting and and creating um, new posts I guess in forums here and I did actually mute some students uh, so they weren't able to use it so um, it's really easy, easy to control as a teacher and it's a great way to communicate and share work I also used it for assignments and allocate homework online this was uh, really great as well so uh, OneNote isn't all only just used for teachers to upload their lessons but for also to show students understanding or demonstrate their own learning. Uh, so for example, what you can see here are two examples of uh, maths OneNote. And on the right hand side, top right hand side, you can see there are um, a student has the, the task was they had to go around the classroom, find re examples of rectangles, and we we're learning about perimeter and area. So they had to then take photographs of the rectangles that they'd found, um, measure them, uh, upload the uh, photographs into OneNote, and then perform the calculations. So they had to work out the perimeter around the rectangle and then this, um, the, the area uh, um, of that same rectangle. Uh, you can see I've also made some notes here for the student to make, uh, um, I provided feedback to that student like Shani was talk talking earlier around um, making sure that they use the square centimetres um, when they're in their, in their answer. Uh, the one in the bottom left hand corner uh, is an example of me demonstrating how um, we can solve volume. We're looking at the difference between volume and capacity and in this lesson students used the one centimetre cubic MAB blocks and they had to construct um, almost like a Minecraft style 3D object and then um, calculate the uh, dimensions of that um, 3D shape that they created, a 3D uh, rectangular prism, and then uh, basically count the number of cubes. So you can see here this one was 3 centimetres by 2 centimetres by 2 centimetres, which equated to 12 cubic centimetres. Um, and then we counted to make sure we had 12 cubic, cubic actual physically counted the 12 cubic centimetres to match, to make sure our calculations were correct. So it's an example of using manipulating actual real materials, taking photographs of them, uploading and demonstrating their knowledge. So an example of students being able to add value, um, like that extra dimension to their learning and their understanding, as opposed to pure just pen and paper or worksheets. Here's another example of how students have used uh, the camera functionality to upload uh, their images to OneNote and demonstrate their understanding. So here we've got a science experiment that they've taken photographs over uh, this particular time and then made comments um, and observations, recorded their observations on their OneNote um, and I have got the photographs as evidence. So it just gives that extra dimension to their, to their understanding and showing what they know. This here is again another example of how I've used the OneNote app with my class this year in year four. We began our science unit this, this term, this our, fight, our forces unit, with an inquiry question. How many ways can you move a balloon? So we took off down to the Oval and students worked in groups to photograph and record the different ways they could make a balloon move, change its speed, change its direction and change shape. Some students even did slow motion videos of the moving balloons or pushing balloons or pulling balloons. 
We came back to the classroom where the students continued their collaboration by sharing their videos and photographs, working together to document their notes on OneNote, upload their photos on OneNote, and explain the different ways that they were able to make their balloon move. You can see here that the engagement in this type of activity was very high. The science language was rich and the learning was deep. Uh, so iPad specifications, a lot of we get a lot of questions from parents asking about what type of iPad should they buy for their child. Um, we ask that the iPad um, that you get is Wi-Fi only firstly. There is no need to have a SIM card. Um, realistically, if you want to use data and you don't have access to a data of your for, you're using the iPad camping, it's just as easy to hotspot your own like your, your phone to give that iPad. Um, data access. So there's no SIM card is really required. Um, we rec um, if students do come with SIM cards, we actually ask them to remove them. It's really important that will they students are protected on our um, education network and they access the network. And if they're at school and they're accessing the network through an alternative way, we cannot control what they have access to. So it's really, really important that it's a Wi-Fi only iPad. Um, in, um, other than that, um, iPad Air, iPad Pro, um, any of those are, are okay. If you can currently buy one retail, they it should it should suffice. Um, generally speaking, an iPad we would expect to last approximately four years, um, as long as you can update with a current um, iOS update. So if we can put the current software, um, it's iOS software on there, then it's um, it's it's suitable. Um, minis are not are not really recommended. If you have a mini, uh, it's that we often have difficulty with them, so we do not recommend a mini. Uh, but any current retail um, iPad you can purchase is fine. Uh, 32 gig is sufficient. However, we, I have found that um, sometimes if the kids are using them personally as well, and they're saving lots of videos or taking lots of photographs and saving them on their iPad, if they don't have cloud storage, then um, 34 does kind of run out. It is sufficient for school if you're using it for school. However, if um, we do, I recommend that probably 64 gig is better. Um, other tablets are not compatible with our school system. We have trialed in the past using alternative devices, but we've the um, decision has been that to go with Apple iPads. Um, it's really important to grab a suitable case too. Their kids move around with them. They get put in their bags, a sturdy case. Um, is, is really, really important and screen protection as well. Um, styluses are not uh, essential. However, they are very, very handy. And an Apple Pencil um, is, is a very handy tool. However, it is an expense and it is not um, a requirement. However, we are uh, have recently decided that keyboards are a really uh, our big, uh, are a requirement. So if you can get a case, a strong case with a keyboard or an attachable keyboard, they aren't expensive. You can get Bluetooth ones from quite, you know, quite reasonably. Um, they're just really helpful to help with kids typing skills using an actual keypad rather than just the touch screen on on the device. Kids are really good at touching the screens, but um, you know, actual keyboard skills using the appropriate fingers and things like that is actually really handy. So um, keyboard is a, is a must, stylus is optional. There will be a core app list that is sent home um, between now and the end of the year. And these will be a list of apps that will be used across the three years of the program. These are all free. Now, at the beginning of each year, teachers may give you um, information about other apps that they need to use in the classroom to, or to be downloaded during the school year. If something comes up, teachers will may be in contact with you and say, can you please download this app? Um, these will all be free apps. When students sign up to the iPad at Craigslie program, they must adhere to uh, their responsibilities in looking after their iPads. Uh, firstly, needs to come to school every day fully charged. So it's their responsibility to make sure that it's charged overnight, ready to come to school. Um, it's to stay in their school bag at all times before and after school. It's not to come out of their school bag when it's uh, during the school day, it's locked in class and used only for school purposes. Students who are caught using their iPad who um, outside of these school hours or for uh, using it 
that's not in line with school policy will have their iPad removed from them and have their account access disabled for a period of time depending on how depending on individual circumstances. Um, students need to make sure that they are safe with their iPad both physically when they're carrying them around as well as uh, online safety. These programs will be going uh, discussed with students um, and their teachers at school. It has to go home every night and used appropriately while at school. Um, while they're at home, it, they are allowed, to, you know, it's their own property and they can use it for games if that's uh, how you see that's okay it's at home. However, while they're at school, it needs, um, it's for school use only. So no game should be running in the background. They need to be closed um, and it's used appropriately. Uh, students are required to check and monitor their software updates, making sure their apps are current. Um, as I said before, learning activities are only for school time. Uh, consequences for not following these, these uh, responsibilities um, mean that will, they will have their device removed from them. Uh, it needs to have suitable storage to make sure it's safe. And we do use Apple Classroom and I'll be discussing that in a minute on the next slide. So Apple Classroom is an app that is installed into a teacher's iPad um, and students actually can access in their settings and join the Apple Classroom. What this allows is it allows the teacher to actually monitor the children in their classroom and actually see what they're, they're, uh, what they're doing on their iPads. They can lock the iPad so that they're only using it um, using a particular app. They can open apps for them um, to say open an, open an iPad. Um, they can actually lock the iPads all together. Um, at the end of the day, uh, once Apple Classroom is closed, um, teachers can get a little report on, on the amounts of time that each student has been on particular apps um, throughout the day. So you can get a bit of a report and see, uh, as to what kids are doing. Now, um, this is really helpful because it actually just, uh, at any time, it can show the teacher uh, what the student is, is actually doing on their iPad. So it's an easy way to monitor, or it's an additional way to monitor. Um, not all teachers are using them, and not all teachers use it all the time, but it is, does come in handy so that we can uh, monitor student usage. In addition to the student responsibilities, families also have some responsibilities when they sign their child up for the iPad program. Uh, the number one there is insurance. Now it's really important to insure your child's iPad. You can add it to your home and contents insurance policy um, at home, or you can actually look into getting Apple, there's Apple insurance when you purchase a new iPad. Um, it's important to make sure that they're charged, that your child is charging it, um, and that the, the core apps that we've provided, or the school has provided um, at the beginning of the year is being installed onto, that, onto those iPads. Um, being part of the resource scheme is important uh, because it allows also access to subscriptions through, uh, through that iPad use. It, um, yeah, through the subscriptions. Um, it's important to support your child to participate completely into the scheme, which means they need to bring it every day. You need to be able to fix breakages promptly if they occur, and that all of the apps on their iPads are updated uh, regularly. Um, it's also important to monitor your child's usage and also the storage of um, on their iPad. So, um, Sometimes we find that students have a lot of games or they take a lot of videos and that's completely fine to do in your own time. It's their device and outside of school hours. However, if it impacts on the student's ability to store things on their iPad at school or it's affecting functionality, um, then it can become a bit of a problem. So please just make sure you're keeping an eye on how much space your, your, your iPad or your child is using um, and storing on their iPad. Um, now, we've got here monitoring of social media. Now, this is really important. Um, look, it, it's, it's, a personal pre it's a personal preference. It's a personal choice uh, for each family to decide, make those decisions for their own children. Most social media functionality on apps, well, anything that has some sort of group forum or chat functionality, they do require um, a 13 plus age. Uh, it is very important that you have conversations with your children about how they're using and how they're chatting and communicating um, once 
um, they have access to this this new technology. Um, even if you do not allow your child to have social media apps, there is the messaging functionality on the iPad and we find that students do have do tend to use group messaging and have this group message where um, they send multiple almost spam messaging to large groups of students or friend groups um, so just keep an eye on it have an open conversation with your children about um, messages they're receiving and group chats that they're part of and please talk to your teacher your child's teacher if you think there are any concerns or you have any concerns about that um, about that sort of messaging. Um, the other thing to mention here is also that the uh, your, your child's iPad is not to be used to contact them at school during the school day. Um, if you need to contact your child, just call through the office like you would do if they were in any other year level. Um, we've had situations where parents have actually tried to contact or message their child during the day to give them a message. And the, it just, it creates uh, confusion um, for students who, um, who, uh, who aren't using the, you know, they're receiving messages um, and then they're getting into trouble for it. So we need to make sure that no students are using any sort of messaging during the day. Um, so if you do need to contact your child, you make sure make sure you do it through the office. Okay, so your next steps from here are that there's going to be a QA and a session uh, on the 12th of October uh, this week, week two of term four, starting from 5.30pm. Um, you receive an email invitation to join that online session. Uh, students and parents are asked to read through the section of the agreement form. So you'll also receive a copy of the policy document, the I Learn at Craigslist policy document that will be emailed home. Um, it will also detail the participation agreement that you'll need to sign online. This um, student participation agreement form will be emailed via, I think it's going to be, um, via, it'll be emailed home and also through the Schools In app and you can fill in and complete that form online on behalf of your child. Uh, you'll also get an email notification of the call list of apps that will need to be installed by the end of next, uh, by the end, you'll get the email by the end of the year um, for the call list apps to be installed before the beginning of next year, 2023. Um, but the session will on Wednesday, the 12th of October, October on Wednesday at 5.30 should give you some more information as well. Thank you for coming this far and listening to the presentation and taking an interest in your child's education for 2023. Uh, if you'd like to find out more or ask any questions, please join us for our Microsoft Teams Q&A session on Wednesday night, the 12th of October from 5.30pm. See you then.